Ferguson Radio Corporation Limited. This is the 325A radio. <coughs> Cabinet's in reasonable condition, but it will need refinishing. The uh, chassis out as well as this cardboard from the bottom. It allows ex uh, access through the floor to the electronics here. Uh, it's had a thorough clean out, it's full of cobwebs and this stuff worked quite well uh, for cleaning out this with a brush. I haven't replaced any capacitors yet. I am doing minimal disturbance electrically. Uh, I'll explain what I mean by that in a short while. But I have removed a capacitor between the neutral and the earth because this chassis never came with an earth flex. It now has an earth which I've connected to there and the on off switch the problem with these is it's a rivet and they do wear out electrically eventually so I've identified the best circuit on that two, two gang switch and uh, yeah HT capacitors those may be the first to go bang but it's a 60 year radio, I'm not going to switch it on in a hurry. Let's just show you the front. On, off and tone, volume, wave range and tuning knob. The wave range switch is an interesting one. That goes to the uh, switch gear, and these two wires here move this little flag up and down. Long, medium, and short wave, or gram. That mechanism is very stiff. I've cleaned it up. Goes to the springs there. The other mechanism, the tuning dial, was also very stiff, but I've cleaned that up. And when I say switch it on uh, slowly, I'm uh, I'm not replacing all the capacitors, but I'm seeing which ones fail very gradually. I'm switching it on like 10 seconds, 20 seconds half a minute and uh, before I go any further I'm just going to do a little video uh, just out of interest I'm monitoring the high tension when I power it up I'm using an isolating transformer that's got a half amp fuse on the primary it is also in series with the light bulb 40 watt so it doesn't get full power it just gets restricted power here goes uh, excuse the noise of a washing machine in the background I do need to connect an aerial it's the old fashioned push in the whole job. Let's just hang that up there. Both of the light bulbs are blown. I've replaced the one. Forty watt light bulb on half brightness. 
and the voltage should go up as well. It's drawing a large current. Oh. 3, 5, 10, 11, 20, 30, 40, 50. I've had it up to about uh, 200 before now. 160, 180. It's crackling from the loudspeaker. 200 volts. I haven't been able to get any stations. 200 volts on the high tension. Now if I switch it off, see how quickly it drops. That suggests to me that the capacitors aren't that great, or maybe it's not. I mean the without a circuit diagram I can't really say much about the uh, situation what components I ought to replace first the cathode AC bypass capacitors like the 20, 25 microfarad one um, those will probably be leaky because they're literally picks. The others are wax covered paper and I'm assuming they're okay. For example, the one I cut out from the neutral to chassis, that one registered absolutely fine for capacitance, zero DC uh, current. I was going to show it you but I can't find it here. So, um, let's call this video part one of this uh, radios rejuvenation but uh, I'm very pleased that's cleaned up 60 year radio with all this paint on the inside of the glass is uh, pristine and it's an interesting mechanism it makes that funny creak noise because the wire just um, scrapes over that it's not a roller I had to glue one of these Bakelite knobs back together with super glue because um, it had cracked and been forced. But uh, I I'm going to try <coughs> in my next video a uh, just audio input to the gramophone so I could see that how that goes. I know.